Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you something very special. Some 40 millimeter miniature goodness brought to you by the brand new beautiful game based around the Apex Legends universe. Glass Cannon Unplugged managed to get their hands on the licensing for Apex Legends and have made it their mission to build a beautiful skirmish game based around that universe with stunning miniatures, foldable cardboard scenery fitted into the box straight away, which means the cost of investment into this game is quite low. The starter box set literally gives you everything you need to play the game. It's a diceless miniature game, which I find to be quite bizarre, and I'm very intrigued to figure out how that all works and uh, get stuck into this game system myself. They've designed this game with ease of play in mind. So if you are like me and are not someone who uh, lives in the kind of complicatedness of game systems and like to just pick up and play of ease, then this is definitely the game for you. Not only do you get 40 millimeter stunning miniatures, each miniature comes with its own custom diorama base that it sits into, which also holds up its gaming play cards while you're playing your games of Apex Legends. I think this is a beautiful a little addition and it makes every character a scene so that when you're not playing the game, you can put them on your shelves and they look pretty cool. Apex Legends has sponsored this video and have sent me the miniatures from the upcoming game system to paint up for you guys in a series of videos. And I'm looking forward to bringing you each and every one of them. As a person who's never actually played the video game Apex Legends, I feel like I ha can go into painting these guys with an open mind. Many people out there will have an idea of what the skins of these characters are meant to look like and I'm just gonna go a completely different direction, have a little bit of fun with them and make the color schemes that I think would look coolest on them. So hopefully you stick around and enjoy the three part series which will be coming through the next couple of weeks where I'll show you guys how to paint up some of these stunning champions. If this sounds like something that you are interested in, I will leave a link below which will take you to their Kickstarter paired where you can click to be notified on launch and check out all the details for yourself. Before I get into the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. If you're interested in getting involved in that, there's links to it below. You get access to a private Discord server and an extra video every single week. That's 52 extra videos a year for being a channel member or a Patreon subscriber. All right, guys, let's get into painting these models. So when this box did arrive, I wasn't really sure what to expect. And when I cracked it open and seen that they had provided all four of the main game miniatures coming with the box set, and not only that, they had also cleaned them up, assembled them, sprayed them, including a zenithal for me so I could get straight into painting. I thought that was a really nice touch. We really took a little bit of work off my plate. And uh, I guess it just shows them in a, a really good light straight away. As soon as I opened the box, I was immediately like, wow, look at these, look at the detail. Really makes a difference when you go from like 28, 32 millimeter miniatures up to 40, the extra detail you can get into a miniature. This guy, the kind of grim gas trench fighter is probably my favorite one. So I might save him till last. Yeah, he's just so cool. <laughs> Very Death Corps of Krieg style aesthetic to him with his trench knife and everything. This is the monster, the big brute with the shotgun and the energy shield. Um, I believe his name is Gibraltar. And he's the guy I'm actually going to be focusing on the, on the first tutorial. They've actually commissioned me to do three tutorials and there's four miniatures. So unfortunately, one of these guys is going to get left out. I might do them on a Twitch stream. And um, if you're curious, I do stream on Twitch every single Tuesday and Thursday from 8 p.m. till 10 p.m. So it's a nice little block of four hours a week that you can come join in and get involved with my Twitch and get, get some hobby time in. So I'm going to start with uh, some Agros Dunes contrast and like this is straight off the model as they come. I didn't do any extra prep work or any more spraying. They did a great job getting them ready for me. So I got to literally just put paint straight onto miniature. Agros Dunes was used for all of his like under fatigues and kind of jumpsuit thing that he wears. There's something you might notice or you might not notice as I paint through this miniature. So if at any point you notice anything with the way that I'm painting this miniature that you think is kind of interesting or that jumps out at you, uh, put in the comments below what you think you have figured out. And if you haven't figured it out until the end, I will tell you at the very end and what I have done here, which is kind of funny. Um, Krieg camo was then brought in and used on all of the webbing. That was immediately why I didn't want to do the traditional white color scheme that is on this miniature. Once I saw that there was sculpted military webbing, 
he's wearing basically like a big suit of body armor and he is i just think of him as like a, a breacher you know he's the one that sent in first to clear the doorway shield to protect himself shotgun for any close range engagements and then a lot of body armor as soon as i saw that real like militaristic style i knew that i wanted to do him in more kind of natural military tones and that's where the green and the khaki came from a bit of black templar was then used to uh get his boots looking nice and shiny and black i also do this for all the straps that hold on his webbing and body armor onto his body as see as i was painting his boots i noticed there was some other little sections um that i think were supposed to be more of the military green color so i didn't do them in the black i left them gray and then uh coming back to them i did just do a quick coat of the gray as or the green as well just to tie them in a little bit more as you can see there they're green now model is starting to come together now from here we're going to go to golden flesh and just add a little bit to his face everything else on him is completely covered up he's wearing gloves and everything else is covered in body armor also i after i did his face i went back to the black templar and just base coated in his hair i decided to go for the glossy black hair on him Another quick and easy step, but he does the job making the model look neat and tidy and framing his face really well as well with all the dark tones around it. I usually stick to my 32mm miniatures. It's only when I do some paid partnerships, stuff, some sponsored videos that I really get to push myself, stretch myself outside my comfort zone and paint some slightly larger scale miniatures. And I haven't not enjoyed a single one so far. Even when I did the bust a few weeks ago, it was, like I said, something I'd never done before, but I did thoroughly enjoy it, and now it's just on my shelf, brighter place. So I am looking forward to trying out these 40mm miniatures. The rest will uh, have even finer details, so I'll have to pay attention to that when I'm doing it. I threw a nice dark silver over all the metallics, and then it was time to shade the miniature, so I used a Seraphim Sepia. I basically covered the entire miniature with this. I used it to shave everything from the khaki trousers to his green body armor to metallics on his shotgun. I think it's a shotgun anyway. It looks like a shotgun to me. Any Apex Legends player out there want to correct me on anything I'm saying about these guys, please do feel free to jump in the comments below. I am not in no way going to get offended um, by people correcting anything I say about these models. Like I said, I am not an Apex Legends fan um, vis a vis the video game. But I'm now becoming a fan with the miniatures game, so... I, I welcome all information you want to uh, to share with me. Carg stone was then brought in after the shade was dry and I did some work on the base to layer up all of that khaki uh, cloth and material on its jumpsuit. Honestly, when this was all layered up, I thought it was a little bit too bright. And I do do something later on, a little, little trick of the trade um, to fix that a little bit. Right now, it looks like he's wearing his long johns with then a pair of body armor over the top of it and it's not sitting quite the way I wanted to. Wa flesh was brought in to layer up all of the body armor and on things like his knee pads uh, and the chest armor and stuff like that it's very easy when i go into the webbing i'm taking my time and going along each layer of webbing i don't want to fill in all the gaps and the details and the crevices i want it still be really clear this is like molly body work I can, it's i've never had the chance to paint that before and I, I'm, I'm relishing it so i want to make sure i do a good job on that Okay, once all the green is layered up, the model starts to look more like that military style miniature. Corvus Black was then brought in to cover up the, I don't know, the shrapnel apron that he's wearing across the front of his body. I didn't layer up the boots, they were nice dark black, and when I was dry brushing up the base with the browns, it kind of hit the, the boots, which made it look nice and weathered, so I just left it be. I do that a lot, to be honest. There's a few other black details in the miniature I did layer up, like his hair, the hands, uh, which are in gloves of course and then that thing that comes out over the top of his backpack once again i'm sure somebody who knows apex legends may indeed know what the hell that is feel free to share that with me in the comments iron hand steel was brought in to layer up all of the metallics make them pop a little bit more but leaving that sepia uh work in all of the kind of crevices and stuff like i said i imagine this guy as being the breacher he is constantly kicking down doors, storming houses while shelling is going off all around. There's lots of dust and debris falling. He's not going to be a clean, pristine soldier. He's going to look like he has brin through the ringer. And I want to make sure that is portrayed on the miniature itself. 
From here, it's time to work up the face a little bit. So we're gonna just do a quick two-stage highlight. We're gonna start with Cadian Flesh Tone. Highlight his face. Like I said, there's not a lot of it showing. So top of the cheeks, his nose, forehead, um, a little bit of his lips if you can get to it. And yeah, on his ear, of course, yeah. Quick highlights on those will be really nice. And then from there, we're basically going in and gonna do exactly the same thing. But this time we're gonna jump over to Kislev Flesh, which is obviously brighter again. And from there, we're just gonna do the same highlight, but just less. So the very tip of the nose, very top of the cheek, a little bit on the forehead, tiny bit on the lip, and the tips of the top of the ear is all you wanna do to add that really nice highlight to the face. And then leave it like that. Want to take your time not to hit any of the other parts of the miniature. We're getting close to the kind of finish mark here. So what I want to do now is bring in a little bit of the dark earth texture or weathering powder from Humbrol. This is that little trick I was talking about where I thought the fatigues looked a little bit too um, bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of this to the base as the kind of dust and debris of the local area. And once I've introduced that color to the base, then it's okay to dust up his legs. Because like I said, he has been trundling through this kind of arid area and if you're curious to what I was talking about at the start of this video about uh, how I did this guy um, and notice anything it was that I used the same exact painting guide that I used for my Cadians and it's just one of those things that I like getting across every now and again is to stop thinking so literally with the videos if there's a scheme that you like it doesn't have to go on the model that I did it on so I know people who have taken my Sons of Horror stream and applied it to Leagues of Votan and it looks absolutely stunning uh, and stuff like that. So if there's particular colors or particular gradients that you think look fantastic, just bookmark it. Think about it, how you could apply it to, even if you're not interested in that army, it might be great to use it on something else. So after I added the dust, stuck on his energy shield. This is our completed Gibraltar miniature for the beautiful new Apex Legends game. Super excited to bring the rest of these miniatures to life uh, in the videos. I hope you guys enjoy it. Like I said, please let me know if you're interested in anything in the comments below. And let me know which of the other two figures I should do in future videos. Okay, guys, and there we have it. The first uh, miniature from the new Apex Legends miniature board game is now finished up. I did him in a much more traditional military style. Once I held a miniature on my hand and saw all the webbing on his gears, obviously the military side of things jumped into my head and I wanted to do him in more natural tones. Obviously, the miniature normally is painted up in loads of whites and greys with orange trim, which is very cyberpunk and cool, but I wanted to go for something just a little bit more down to earth. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a like subscribe to the channel if you're not already done so and ask me any questions about these miniatures this game system or anything else you want in the comments below and i will get back to each and every one of you guys thank you guys so much hope you enjoyed the video i'll see you in the next one